Om Namah Shivaya Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Ishwara said, Dear children, hail to ye. I hope the universe and the race of the deities under my suzerainty flourish in their respective duties. O gods, the fight between Brahma and Vishnu is already known to me. This agitation on your part is like a redundant speech. Thus the consort of Amba consoled the concourse of Devas with honey-like speech, sweetened with a smile, in the manner of appeasing children. In that very assembly, the Lord announced his desire to go to the battlefield of Hari and Brahma, and accordingly issued his directive to a hundred of the commanders of his attendants. Different kinds of musical instruments were played to announce the start of the Lord's journey. The commanders of the attendants were in readiness, fully bedecked in their ornaments, seated in their respective vehicles. The Lord, consort of Ambika, mounted the holy chariot shaped like Omkar and embellished with five circular rings. He was accompanied by his sons and Ganas. All the Devas, Indra and others, followed. Honored suitably by the display of banners of various colors, fans, chowries, scattered flowers, music, dance, and instrumental music, and accompanied by the great goddess Parvati, Pashupati Shiva went to the battlefield with the whole army. On seeing the battle, the Lord vanished in the firmament. The play of music stopped, and the tumult of the ganas subsided. There, in the battlefield, Brahma and Achyuta, desirous of killing each other, were awaiting the result of the Maheshwara and Pashupata weapons hurled by them. The flames emitted by the weapons of Brahma and Vishnu burned the three worlds. On seeing this imminent untimely dissolution, the bodiless form of Shiva assumed the terrific form of a huge column of fire in their midst. The two weapons of fiery flame, powerful enough to destroy the entire world, fell into the huge column of fire that manifested itself there instantaneously. Seeing that auspicious, wonderful phenomenon assuaging their weapons, they asked each other, What is this wonderful form? What is this column of fire that has risen up? It is beyond the range of the senses. We have to find out its top and bottom. Jointly deciding like this, the two heroes, proud of their prowess, immediately set about assiduously in their quest. Nothing will turn up if we are together. Saying this, Vishnu assumed the form of a boar and went down in search of the root. Brahma, in the form of a swan, went up in search of the top. Piercing through the nether worlds and going very far below, Vishnu could not see the root of the fiery column. Utterly exhausted, Vishnu in the form of a boar returned to the former battleground. Dear one, your father Brahma, who went high up in the sky, saw a certain bunch of Ketaki flowers of mysterious nature falling from above. On seeing the mutual fight of Brahma and Vishnu, Lord Shiva laughed. When his head shook, the Ketaki flower dropped down. Although it had been in its downward course for many years, neither its fragrance nor its luster had been diminished even a bit. The flower had been intended to bless them. Brahma said, O Lord of flowers, by whom had you been worn? Why do you fall? I have come here in the form of a swan to seek out the top. The flower replied, I am falling down from the middle of this primordial column that is inscrutable. It has taken me a long time. Hence, I do not imagine how you can see the top. Brahma said, Dear friend, 
Hereafter you must do as I desire. In the presence of Vishnu you must say like this, O Achyuta, the top of the column has been seen by Brahma. I am the witness of the same. Saying this, he bowed to the Ketaka flower again and again. Even falsehood is recommended in times of danger. So say the authoritative texts. Returning to the original place and seeing Vishnu there, utterly exhausted and lacking pleasure, Brahma danced with joy. Vishnu, in the manner of a eunuch admitting his inability to a woman, told him the truth that he could not see the bottom. But Brahma told Vishnu, O Hari, the top of this column has been seen by me. This Ketaki flower is my witness. The Ketaki flower repeated the falsehood, endorsing the words of Brahma in his presence. Hari, taking it to be true, made obeisance to Brahma. He worshipped Brahma with all the sixteen means of service and homage. The Lord, taking up a visible form in order to chastise Brahma, who practiced trickery, came out of the column of fire. On seeing the Lord, Vishnu stood up and with his hands shaking with fear caught hold of the Lord's feet. He said, It is out of ignorance and delusion about you, whose body is without a beginning or an end, that we indulged in this quest prompted by our own desire. Hence, O sympathetic Lord, forgive us for our fault. In fact, it is but another form of your divine sport. Ishwara said, O oh dear Hari, I am pleased with you because you strictly adhered to truth in spite of your desire to be a lord. Hence, among the general public you will have a footing equal to mine. You will be honored too, likewise. Hereafter you will be worshipped separately from me, having separate temple, installation of idols, festivals, and worship. Thus formerly the Lord, delighted by Hari's truthfulness, offered him a footing equal to his own, even as the assembly of Devas witnessed the same. <laughs>